From medieval medinas to savouring camel burgers, join us on an adventure while we uncover the authentic side of Morocco. On this trip, we go on a journey through three of the most authentic cities in Morocco, Fez, Meknes and Casablanca. Stay tuned and find out which of these amazing cities is our favourite spot in Morocco. Our first stop is Fez, a city with a history dating back over a thousand years. As one of the world's oldest continuously inhabited cities, Fez is renowned for its medieval architecture, vibrant souks and the historic university. Next, we'll explore Meknes, a city with a rich history as it was once the capital of Morocco during the 17th century. This city certainly isn't putting on a show for tourists and it is nearby the incredibly impressive ruins of Volubilis. And for our final spot, we move on from northern Morocco into the bustling city of Casablanca. This coastal city is home to the absolutely insane Hassan II Mosque, which is the third largest mosque in the world. Fez is known as the most historic city in Morocco, and we found that everything here was the oldest and the biggest. We felt like this really gave us a glimpse into the country's rich heritage and culture. We stayed in the beautiful Riyadh Yakult in Fez. A Riyadh is a traditional Moroccan house with a central courtyard, usually with a lavish garden and fountain. Sleeping in a Riyadh is an absolute must-do for any trip to Morocco, and we loved our nights in the Riyadh Yakult. After a relaxing afternoon in the Riyadh pool, we ventured out for a group dinner inside the Medina. Lucky we had our guide, as there is no chance that we would have been able to navigate our way through the maze of alleys at night to find the restaurant without him. For our dinner, we're excited to go to a local family restaurant that was renowned for the traditional Moroccan pastilla, which is a kind of chicken pie, which is an interesting blend of sweet and savoury flavours. The homemade meal in such a warm and inviting restaurant really hit the spot. It was a great group experience, finished off with an amazing view from the restaurant rooftop. So we've just come to Bourg Shud, which is a military fortress on one side of the city, which gives us this amazing viewpoint all over the city so you can see the age of the city and the different stages that it's been built. It's just phenomenal. You can see about a quarter of it is taken up by the, um, the Royal Palace as well. Fez has a rich tradition of producing intricate pottery and ceramics that are highly sought after by both locals and tourists. The pottery of Fez is characterised by its detailed designs, vibrant colours and the use of traditional techniques that have been passed down through generations. So while we're in the city, we had to stop by an artisan workshop called the Mosaic et Pottery de Fez. This place has their tours down to a science and we had such a great hour here going through their pottery facility. We were treated to an explanation of each stage involved in making the beautiful pottery pieces. We were absolutely blown away by the talent and skill displayed by the staff and we even invested in a souvenir to take home. Having already been in a couple of Moroccan Medinas, Fez's Medina was absolutely ginormous in comparison. A local Fez guide was able to show our group around all of the important areas of this vast winding maze of alleys, and we certainly recommend either joining a tour or hiring a guide, otherwise you will 100% get lost. During our walk through the Medina, we stopped at the Al Atarin Madrasa. This spot is a stunning 14th century religious school, known for being a prime example of Islamic architectural artistry. It was incredibly serene to spend a few moments soaking in the beauty of this school's courtyard. So we're here in this magnificent building that used to be what's called a caravan 
hotel. So the bottom floor is all for indoor markets and there's little shops. And then up here, I think, they say there was 150 rooms. It's beautiful. There's all this ornate wooden carving and columns. A bit puffed from going up two flights of stairs, <laughs> but it's so worth a visit. One of the most common and iconic images of Fez is the Chihuahua Tannery, which is located in the oldest quarter of the Medina. Here the hides of cows, sheep, goats and camels are processed by first soaking in a series of white liquids, made from various mixtures of cow urine, pigeon feces, quicklime, salt and water, in order to clean and soften the tough skins. After a couple of days in this liquid, they are then soaked in the dyeing solutions which use natural colourants such as poppy for red, indigo for blue and henna for orange. After the dyeing, they are dried under the sun, with the resulting leather then sold to craftsmen who use it to produce Morocco's famed leather goods. Wanting to see as much craft as possible while in Fez, we had a quick pop into a silk shop where they were weaving aloe vera scarves. And the end result was just beautiful. It was fascinating to see the artists in action. For our second dinner in Fez, we decided to venture out on our own. And after a little bit of TripAdvisor research, we landed on Fonduk Bazaar, which had a super cool upper floor balcony and great food. It's just crazy walking through these streets and thinking that people were walking through these same cobblestones during Roman times. <laughs> en route to Meknes, we stopped by Volubilis. Volubilis is a Berber Roman archaeological site and was once considered to sit at the very bottom of the Roman Empire. These ruins were just amazing, they were so well preserved. Walking through the ancient streets, we really felt like we were stepping back in time. Our next city stop was Meknes. Meknes is an incredibly authentic city renowned for its well-preserved historical sites, such as the Bob Mansour Gate, serving as a reminder of its imperial past as former capital of Morocco. We found this city to be an absolute culture shock and we loved winding through the alleys of the Medina on our hunt for a bite to eat. As usual, Grace used me as the sacrificial lamb when trying the street food. Lucky for me, it was all nice. Here in the Medina, I got to try prickly pears, fresh bread and fried sardines, which surprisingly were my absolute highlight. We were lucky enough to be invited into a local's home to enjoy a delicious lunch of meze and a camel burger. The family was incredibly warm and welcoming, and the food was to die for. We felt very fortunate to have the opportunity to see the inside of a typical home in the Medina. After our lunch, we stopped in at a store in the Medina and got to watch the skill required to get the silver and gold detailing on the products. The speed and precision that they worked at was incredible. Welcome to Casablanca. Here's looking at you, kid. <laughs> I haven't seen the Casablanca if movie, so that the movie, goes right over my head. If you know, you know. <laughs> We're here on, I think the sign said, the Arabian League Park. We're surrounded by a sea of palm trees. It's such a beautiful place to catch some shade. It's like. 40 degrees, 30, mm, 35 degrees out. Degrees. And we're right next to the Casablanca Sacre Coeur, which is beautiful. We're gonna go for a little walk around town, so we'll bring you along with us. The Casablanca Cathedral is a stunning landmark in the heart of Casablanca. Built during the French colonial period in the early 20th century, this neo-Gothic church was super unique and definitely worth stopping by. We then strolled to Muhammad V Square, which could easily have been called Pigeon Square, as it was absolutely covered with them. It was nice to quickly pass through, however we preferred our time at the Arab League Park. A 15 minute walk from Muhammad V Square and we were at Villa des Arts. This gallery is in a glamorous white building that looks just as I had imagined Casablanca to look. 
This gallery hosts temporary collections only, and we enjoyed an hour or so here walking through an exhibition on female Moroccan art. We're here at Hassan II Mosque, built by King Hassan II. It's a bit of a really smoggy or foggy morning, so we can't see it super well yet. But it's the seventh largest mosque in the world, and it's the largest functioning mosque in Africa. So we're excited to go inside soon. It's hard to describe how large this mosque actually is. During the holiest days, up to 25,000 people gather inside and outside to pray. We felt so lucky to be able to walk through this amazing religious building and it was such a special experience. We loved our time exploring three of the most authentic cities in Morocco. This holiday was such a big culture shock, but in the best way possible. The Hassan II Mosque in Casablanca was absolutely incredible and the rich and unique history of Mekinez was fascinating. However, we have to say that the city of Fez was without a doubt our favourite spot in Morocco so far. There is still so much of this beautiful country left to explore and we can't wait to come back. Please help us reach more audiences by hitting that like button and subscribe to follow along on our new adventures. Thanks for watching.